in this next video what we're going to do is show you how to put a roof on our little building in the previous video we added walls to our slab here so we put in this slab and added then the walls and then um, if we look in 3d we'll see now we've got our four walls and now what we want to do is span uh, the distance from here to here now uh, or from here to here and let's take a look here's our layout of our uh, little office building and um, the major bearing walls are going to be the ones where the uh, joist that we're going to put in here are going to rest okay from so from here to here do we run them from here to here or do we run them from here to here um, there's a large opening right here which means we'd have to have a very uh, uh, strong header uh, but there's more windows uh, on both walls here whereas this wall back here is pretty solid uh, kind of six one half dozen the other we're going to uh, the next thing I'd think about is how the mechanical might run uh, in this case probably the mechanicals will run down these hallways uh, and then out to the different offices and stuff and if that's the case then we probably want the trusses running this way so it'll be easier to get the larger ducts uh, down uh, the hallways so we're going to just make a decision to run it from here to here and we'll put a, a, a header on top of a concrete header on top of this uh, window uh, door opening so let's uh, minimize that back down next thing is is we're gonna so we're gonna put joist like this uh, locating them uh, on top of the wall and then uh, most likely uh, burying them or, or creating a parapet wall on top of that um, and then uh, so that's in section would look something like this right here okay uh, so Here's the concrete block. Eventually, we're going to put brick out here. Um, but right now, we're just going to do the structure. And so if you notice, there's some detail. Uh, might be kind of hard to see, but there's some detail that's going to happen. Uh, there's a U-shaped block that is going to be run. That's called a, a bond beam block. It's going to be run uh, completely along the top course of our wall. And then uh, a metal plate. Is going to be uh, embedded with a uh, hook on it in into that concrete and the rebar you can see the rebar right here uh, and that will then give us something to weld uh, or bolt these uh, these joists on they'll probably weld them or I'd probably weld them uh, but it kind of depends on the uh, fabricator and who's uh, setting them and then on top of that, you'll see right here, uh, steel deck. And then on top of that, there's going to be some concrete. That's all a part of our roof structure. Okay. The open web joist um, and the st steel deck and the concrete. Those are the three things we're going to model in, in, in the BIM. These details would be expressed in a wall section and drawn independently, most likely in a wall section. We're not going to go in and, and detail the model with this information so with that covered let's uh, let's put in let's determine the size and then let's put in the uh, uh, joist so if we want to add uh, these joist let's go back over here we need to know the distance they're going to span and approximately their depth how deep they're going to be the deeper they are the more load they can handle and the greater the, the span can be um, normally uh, joists run in the neighborhood of anywhere from about eight inches up to 32 inches and usually increments of two inches um, and looking at alan Anno's book uh, on joists they say uh, from their graphs it's going to take about um, 30 inches here to span 50 feet um, and so we're going to assume that the joist is going to be 30 inches deep the uh, other thing we need to know is the distance between the joist uh, the the wider that becomes the more uh, 
these loads uh, increase, right? More area here that, that distributes the load to the joist. So normally a uh, joist are spaced between four feet and 10 feet apart. We're gonna just kind of compromise uh, if we take, if we divide our 50, uh, we could probably every five feet would be 10 joist. Um, let's see here. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to get my calculator up and running here. Um, so we have 50 feet. Uh, and if we um, divide that by, well, six is going to be uneven. If we put them six feet apart, that's uh, about eight foot four inches each. That would work. We'll just go ahead and, uh, and put them in and determine that they're going to span somewhere around four feet. Let's try 50 feet divided by four feet equals 12. Okay, let's start with, let's do that. And then we'll work from there. So we're gonna use uh, the structure tab here and use a beam, even though this is a joist, we're gonna use beams, uh, the beam command. And then we're gonna download uh, a joist. Uh, you'll only have a, a W shape in there. I've already done this. Want. So I'm just going to go in and show you how to download a family. So you're going to go into load and then you're going to go uh, in your U.S. Imperial. You're going to go into structural framing. Let's go back all the way to U.S. Imperial and we'll scroll down structural framing and then the steel. And then underneath steel, we're going to use a K-series joist, uh, a rod based uh, versus an angle based. And... Uh, and then you'll see a whole list starting from eight inches, as I mentioned before. In the case of a K-series, it only goes up to 30 inches. You'll notice that there's a number of 30 inches right here, and, th and there's a different number out here. That's the weight of uh, a foot of the truss. And so uh, a two foot six inch uh, that has more weight, has more steel in it, so therefore it's going to be stronger. And of course, there's more information that you can look up on them. But we're going to use the strongest one uh, so we'll get the greatest span. So we're going to say OK on that and add that in, which I'd already done. And then we're going to accept that one. So we're going to use that 30K12. And basically, we're going to put in uh, a joist here. So I'm just going to slap it in here from here to here. Oh, we agreed to span it the other direction, didn't we? OK, so I'm going to hit Escape, and we'll expand it this direction. So I'm going to go from the center of that wall, uh, perpendicular here to the center of the wall, and you'll see that we now have a truss in there. OK, and let's move that. We want the first truss to be up against the wall right here. So I'm just going to move it into place. And then we want the second truss to be in the same location here, okay, on this side. And we're going to do that when we do in a copy array, okay. Um, so I'm going to go in, and let's take a look at this real quick in 3D. So where are we? Oh, there's our truss right there. So let's flip around to this side right there and go in. And then one of the things I want you to notice is that it's embedded down in the, con in the concrete block. And we don't want that. We want it to be up on top of the concrete block. And so what we're going to do is move it um, before I copy it so that I don't have to do it for every one of them. And we're going to move it, if you see my cursor over here, uh, right now it's set the justification to the top of this uh, cord. And so what we're going to do is go up. Uh, let's see here. Let's go look at this. And if we look at that particular, the, the type, the dimensions and everything, you'll see the seat depth. Well, that seat depth is that right there, the depth of that. The seat length is the length of this. And so the seat depth is two and a half inches. And so that's going to work great for us. 
And so we're just going to pop two and a half inches in here, 2.5, and I'll apply it. And now it's moved itself up to uh, to the top of the concrete. Now, as we talked about before in our previous uh, drawing, uh, let's see if I can bring that back up here. Uh, you, we had a steel plate that's going to be underneath that, probably somewhere around a half inch, maybe three eighths or something like that. Just to make the dimensions easy, we're going to use three eighths. So we're going to use half, I'm sorry. So there's this plate right here that's going to be uh, anchored down into the, uh, the bond beam there. So let's uh, go back to this and raise it another half inch for that steel plate. And that, that half inch, the steel plate and stuff like that will add in as we uh, increase the detail of the, our structure and our uh, building in the next videos. And so our assignments. Anyway, so we're going to copy this. Uh, I, I think I'm going to start with, it said 12.5. I'm going to start with 13 and see how that goes. Um, go to the larger number. And to do that, I'm going to go back to my top of wall. Uh, so we're going to go back into our top of wall view. And we're going to copy this now 13 times uh, from here to here. And to do that, uh, we're going to use... Uh, we're going to select it first of all, and then go into Modify. And we could use the copy and just copy a bunch of them, but the easiest thing to do would be to use an array. So we're going to use an array. And there's several different ways that we, we can do an array. One is in a, a linear form, which is what we want to do, a linear uh, versus a radial around a central point. The other is, is that when we make all these copies, do we want to group them together as one group? Uh, associated as one group and I do so I check that and then we're going to go 13 because we want 13 in total and then we have two options of how we create the array that you're probably familiar with uh, but from using other digital uh, uh, CAD programs and, and 3D modeling programs and that is we can uh, pick the second point in other words we could copy this say four feet this direction and uh, and then it would do all 13 of them four feet from the last one. Uh, the other method is we can choose last. And so we can say, okay, here's the, the location of the first one. I'm going to give you the location of the last one. And then you evenly space all the ones that are left in between them. And that's what I wanted to do. So I'm going to go in here and uh, use last. Click on last there. I'm going to click this edge. The outside edge, here's my wall right here, the outside edge of that, because I want that edge of that joist to bump up against this edge of that wall. So, the, the, and now we'll see that, boom, it put, us, put them all in, and now I'm going to just sele uh, measure and see what that dimension now is. From here to here, four and a half, four feet, one half inch. You can't beat that. Uh, that's uh, close enough. And so now, uh, what we want to do is come in and put our deck. But let's check out what we've done here. So I'm going to click, double click on here, and look at. And we notice that the uh, the trusses are sitting right on top of the block, and we really don't want that. Uh, if we go back to our uh, method that we're using for putting these rafters in, we're going to put a steel plate that's going to be anchored inside that bond, block, bond beam. And this right here is going to be about a half an inch. So we actually want this about a half an inch up. Okay. Now we could choose to do that now, or we could do it later as we were working. But since I've recognized it now, I'm going to go ahead and do it now. I could go to a different uh, view. Uh, well, let's go ahead and go to the top of the wall view here so we could see all of them. And they're in a group right now, so it's going to be hard. I have to edit each one of them independently if I leave them in that group. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, is ungroup uh, them all. Uh, well, actually, I need to select them all and un 
and group them all. Select all lenses, entire project, and then you'll see that I only ungrouped that one. And so I'm just going to ungroup them all. And uh, let's select it, all, select them all again. So deselect, and we'll select them all. Uh, entire project. And so what I want to do is raise this by half an inch. So all I'm going to do now that I've got them all selected, I can go in here and say, well, make this three inches instead of three and a half. And I can apply that to all of them. And they should all be raised. So if we go back into our wall section here, we can see now we have a half inch space. So with that done, uh, we've completed all the joists and got the joist in there at a good spacing. The next next and last thing we're going to do uh, structurally is add the steel deck uh, to the top of this. So on we go into the next video.